Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, some of you who follow my Instagram at sarahjanehu.com, make sure you follow that as well as following me on YouTube, have probably seen the Instagram stories I've been doing, which is on etiquette FAQ. You ask, I answer. And you know what? You guys have been sending me some really good questions, so I want to internalize them in a YouTube series of Etiquette FAQ. You've probably already seen my dining ones. Episode one is already out. Make sure you check it out. So this is officially the launch of Top Social Etiquette Mistakes FAQ Episode one. And by the way, do you have any questions on social etiquette, whether it's with friends or family or, you know, all sorts of things about conversation, what to say? Drop them in the comments below. I want to know I'm reading them and I will pick out your questions and throw them back into future episodes. All right, so question five. This is asked by Lavida de la Reina and she asks, should or can we decline requests made by disrespectful elders or poor leaders? How? So this is a really interesting question and of course it depends on what culture you're into. Um, over here in China or in Asian cultures, there's actually a phrase that says that your parents are the sky and children are the earth. Basically saying that whatever the older generation says, you cannot disobey them, which I don't agree with all the time, but in China, it's sacrosanct. You do not disobey your elders. What you can do, which is really Chinese, and we just do this with anybody, is we just agree face to face, like, oh yeah, mm hmm, okay, and then just don't do it. So in the West, I know there's a lot more direct confrontation, intervention, but there's still a respect for elders. So I think number one depends what culture you're in. Number two depends who these people are. Are they really touchy? Are they, you know, more modernized? You can have a conversation with them. And number three, if you disobey them, what are the repercussions? And I always like to think, okay, what are the repercussions of doing something five minutes later, five days later, and five years later? I mean, is it just something that would make your elders happy and is not that big of a deal? Then maybe just do it! So that's for elders. If you do want to decline their request, then make a joke out of it. You know, make it something lighthearted, like, oh, you know, yes, I, I will buy that house when I have enough money. Or, oh yeah, I'll, you know, just as long as you say something with a slight smile and make a fun joke out of it, then you can really say anything and you can turn down any request. That's a little tip for you. All right, now for the second part of the question, which is poor leaders. And yes, we've all been there before where we've had good leaders and bad leaders. So whether this poor leader is a leader in your company or a leader in the household or in a group of friends or at school. It's important, number one. So where is your position within this organization? Are you number two, just for the, lead, the leader? Or are you like right down here? Leader's here and you're like all the way down here. If so, then do not directly disobey your number one. I would then go to a higher up who you trust and go to them behind the scenes and say, oh, you know, I'm not sure how to follow through with this request. I'm not comfortable with doing this request. What advice would you give, right? So you go to trusted people who support you. Now, let's say if it's your leader and you're like number two, then it's okay. I mean, you're number two, you're trusted right hand. You can go to this leader and be like, hey, you know, can we talk about this? Because maybe there are other solutions to solving this problem, da, 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 da. So remember, find out your place within this organization, whether it's a company or your family and how much say you have and how much say the other person has. And then maybe avoid that head on confrontation. Maybe go around through other trusted, powerful people. Okay, question four. Do you meet up with international male friends or are they always supposed to escort and host you? So assuming the person asking this question is from the US and you know there's somebody international coming from Europe or from Latin America, blah, blah, blah. And let's say you know, you're know you a woman and there is you know, it's a male friend and he's in town and he wants to have dinner with you. So it's actually true that especially in sort of more machismo cultures such as uh, Latin cultures or Middle Eastern cultures, or even in actually Chinese cultures, which are also more traditional, a lot of the times the man, even if he's just a platonic friend, will be like, oh, you know, let me pick you up and then, you know, take you together. Even if you're not romantically involved, even if you're just, you know, really good, like, if you're really almost like brother, sister, kind of like just really good friends. And in the event that this happens, what a gentleman, right? We've all had friends like that. It's like, okay, you know, he's like, I'll pick you up and then we'll go together. Amazing. But I would say it's all about expectations. So generally speaking, I would just 
just say, you know, it's always better to have lower expectations and be surprised than to high, have high expectations and then be disappointed. So I would generally say, don't expect anybody to do anything for you because what do they owe you? If a man picks you up first or you know, opens a door for you, that's a huge bonus. And men, if you're watching this, it is a huge bonus. Immediately, gentleman stratosphere. Now, sometimes I, you may not want the man to come and know where you're living or like, you, you know, it's, I mean, it is kind of like a lot more happy hassle, right? Like they're picking you up and then you're in the car for a long time and going to the restaurant. So sometimes I just don't want to be picked up. But me, I'm also kind of like a no frills guys kind of girl. So I'm usually just like, nope, I'll meet you there. You know, meet you straight there. Uh, usually, generally speaking, I only let guys pick me up if they're like my best guy friends or if they are potential love interests. Otherwise, I'm just like, let's meet there. So I would say, assume you're just gonna meet there unless they tell you, I'll pick you up. If they tell you that and you're happy with them picking you up, let them. If not, just I'll meet you there. Question three. Earl Grey Flavor asks how to confront a person that talks badly about you behind your back. Now, this has happened to all of us. Well, firstly, we've all talked about other people behind their backs and we've all been talked about behind our backs. This is global. If, let's say, there's someone who talks about you behind your back and you don't really care about them and they're kind of insignificant or, you know, whatever, then honestly, there's nothing you can really do about it. Unless they said something that's totally untrue about you. If it's something like they just said, oh, I don't like you, I don't like her, oh, I have a bad feeling about her, blah, 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 nothing you can really say. But if they said, oh, she robbed a bank, right? Or I mean, these reputational slanders, then, well, firstly, you can go get legal action. Secondly, you can go confront them. So if you confront them, you do have to consider a few things. Firstly, by confronting this person, you are letting them know that this thing bothers you and thus, you know, you are, this is kind of like an intervention. So are you okay with letting this person know that what they said hurt you and matters to you? Because in some way it does give them power, okay? So think about this. Now, if it did, or if it's just flat out untrue and they're spreading untrue slanders about you, you do need to confront them. In which case, do it face to face, sit down with them, be like, hey, you know, I heard you told so-and-so person that I robbed the bank. Why, right? <laughs> Don't immediately say, oh my gosh, you're such a bad person. Da, 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 da. No, just focus on the facts. What happened? You heard from such a person that they said ABC. Why? And usually this person will then start explaining and defending themselves. Maybe they'll be like, oh yeah, because FYG told me or because, oh, you know, I saw it in the news or blah, 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 blah. And you want to get all the information first, understanding why they did that before you then say, okay, well, you know, I did not rob a bank or, you know, that's not true, blah, 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 blah. Please stop saying that. This is untrue. This hurts me. Usually, you know, if you do that, the other person will respect you and be like, all right, okay. And they'll also be kind of intimidated. Respect. Question two. This is by I'll Be No Man. And the question is, my friend sends me tedious stuff to read. How do I politely indicate my extreme disinterest? This is something that my father does a lot to me on WhatsApp. He sends me all these newspaper articles about, you know, US-China trade war and like blah, blah, blah. And okay, yes, you know, some of it's interesting, but actually a lot of it is hearsay. I really don't know where his sources come from sometimes. A lot of forwarded and a lot of really long paragraphs which means a lot I have extreme disinterest in. So no matter whether it's our parents sending us spam or whether it's friends sending us spam, the best way is to not engage. Just don't reply. Now, I know what you're thinking, not replying is rude. But you know what? If you reply, then you're encouraging. So what you can do if you really feel bad about not replying is wait a few days to reply and reply, you know, very short, like, you know, just reply sort of with a smiley face and emoticon. What I like to do is I like to say, thanks for sending. We'll read when I get a chance. And that shows the other person that it's, you said thank you for sending it I've acknowledged it I've received it but I don't have the time to read this right now so it should sort of be a subtle hint of like mm. and let's say if in the early days they're sending you the stuff that's how you can reply like oh, okay I'll read it when I get a chance thanks but then if they keep sending it to you just stop implying because you're not obligated to, to reply like multiple multiple times to spam all right and question one which is asked by Emberlyn Meow how to act around people that do not like you. All right, we've all been there. We all have people that we don't like. Of course, you know, there are also many situations where we cannot avoid bumping into the people we do not like or the people who do not like us. So how to behave around this person? Well, 
In social situations, take the higher ground. Definitely do not show that you don't like them because you're classier than that. If it's a big enough group, let's say 20 people or more, then you can definitely get around with like just ignoring this person. If it's small, like five, six people, maybe even 10 people, then you kind of have to acknowledge this person. So I usually would just say, hi, you know, how are you? And then just leave it at that, you know, just hi and then move on. And there's absolutely no reason to strike conversation. Now, there's also no need to let this person know that you don't like them because if you're acting all iffy and like all weird and blah, 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 I mean, it shows that they have power over you. So what you want to show is that you're indifferent. They have no power over you. Whatever they do, you don't care. That is the ultimate power. Now, I also want to let you know that oftentimes we dislike people or people dislike us because of miscommunication. There was an instance where there was a girl that I didn't really like and as a result, you know, maybe she didn't really like me. I mean, I really made, never made an effort with her. But for some reason this summer, we've both been invited to about three or four small group social gatherings. And we actually struck up a conversation with each other and got to know each other on such a level that I was like, huh, she's actually kind of cool. So that by our most previous, like by the fourth gathering, we were the ones who spoke to each other the most and hung out with each other the most. So definitely, you know, take advantage of this to turn lemons into lemonade if you can. Now look, if you kind of understand, but remember, don't let it show that this person bothers you because then you are giving them the power. All right, so those are top five social etiquette mistakes in my social etiquette FAQ series. You ask, I answer. This is episode one. Make sure you drop me a comment below with any questions that you have. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.